I'm sad. It's a sad day as an African for me today. So if I should tell you that this is a game between two of the three biggest nations in the history of women's football in Africa, and they are going at each other like this, just because of a perceived thought of juju. It will sound upset, right? But that is what is happening. Nigeria are nine-time champions of Africa. Nine times they've been able to win the women's Afcon. And they're also the only African country to play at every single edition of the Women's World Cup since its inception in 1991. That is nine times they have played at the World Cup. And they are also the only African country to make it to the quarterfinal of the World Cup. Cameroon, on the other hand, are yet to win the Women's Afcon in their history. But then they have played in 10 semi-final editions. So apart from Nigeria, no country has played in more semi-final of the Women's Afcon than Cameroon. They are also the first African country to win the game at the FIFA Women's World Cup on their debut. And they're also the first African country who qualified out of the group stages on their debut. Two of the times Cameroon has played at the Women's World Cup, they have qualified from the group stages in each of them. That is how big the two countries are. Nigeria Super Falcons played against, that is the indomitable alliances from Cameroon in the penultimate round of the, that is the Olympic qualifiers for Paris 2024. So the winner of the tie goes to the last round of qualifiers and who wins goes straight to the Olympics. So it was everything at stake here. And the first leg of the game in Cameroon ended in a goalless draw, 0-0. None of the teams were able to score. So that means that going into the second leg, it was everything to fight for. Whoever wins it in Nigeria gets through to the last round of the qualifiers. So in the second leg, Nigeria's Esther Kurunku scored for the Super Falcons just after 15 minutes of the game. She registered the goal for Nigeria which placed Nigeria in a poor position to qualify to the last round of the Olympics. Even though in the game, Cameroon struggled to really create chances as compared to Nigeria and was Nigeria who created the better of chances in the game and even missed the better of chances in that same game. Cameroon believed that Nigeria had, let me say, juju in their pool. So in the 51st minute, they wanted to touch the Nigerian net in order to break that juju. It was first Cameroon's affair, Kalame in Mana, who tried to go and touch the nest, but then she was strongly held down by Nigeria's goalkeeper Chiamaka in Adozi, as you see here. So the Nigerian players also prevented the Cameroonians from that is touching their nets because they also perceived that Cameroon wanted to plant some juju in their nets for them for Cameroon to score. So they also prevented them from touching the net. But in the midst of the scaffold, that is Eto, who is another striker for Cameroon went to touch the net actually. She actually made it to the net and touched it. That was in the 52nd minute of the game. But Cameroon still couldn't score. So in the 90 plus minutes of the game, that's an injury time, Cameroon had a free kick, which was maybe the last chance, there, possibly the last chance of the game. And then another drama ensued. This time it was Annie from Cameroon who raced down in an attempt to go and touch the net. And in the process, she actually rubbed the tackle to Nigeria's goalkeeper, that is Chemaka Nandozi with her elbow, rugby tackle straight to the elbow, straight to her, to her ribs in the rugby tackle. And then she went to touch the net. But still, even after touching the net from this free kick, they still failed to score. They even failed to even get a shot on target from this free kick. But it was Annie who got a red card for the rugby tackle she made to that is Chemaka in Adozi. My thoughts on all this, this was purely an unnecessary and also shameful act which ensued in the game. So as someone who has watched football in various stadiums in Africa, I can tell you this is something that actually happens a lot. Teams try to touch their opponent's net to break a possibly juju. It happens a lot in, 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 in different games. And I have, I'm yet to see actually a team touch the net of an opponent and then after touching the net, a goal comes from the immediate attack. I'm yet to see something like that. So this was just something purely unnecessary. And to think that of two of the biggest countries in Africa, actually did this at such a big stage. It's a purely shameful act. It was just for the aesthetics and it was just shameful.